It wasn't until the uh, 1300s that the Norman French words began to be attested into the uh, spoken English of the time. A French-speaking Norman would refer to a uh, mounted warrior on a horse as a chevalier, which we now derive our uh, chivalry, um, as we saw in a previous video. The Norman lords would move around with their chevalier escorts for protection. It was too dangerous not to do so uh, among the highly resentful English, and so these mountain warriors were a common sight. The Anglo-Saxon English, speaking a different language, used their own words to describe the chevalier presence along, among them. In pre-Norman times, earls and other Anglo-Saxon nobles would ride with escorts. These mounted entourage members were referred to with the old English word kinnit, which just meant a uh, boy or young adolescent. Not being able to speak or understand Norman French, the English used the same word for the Norman armoured escorts. By 1300, as the use of English gradually became more tolerated and commonplace, kinnit, more recognisable today as knight, had replaced chevalier in both noun and verb form. Knighthood also comes from the same old English source. It is in the same way childhood refers to the time of being a child. Knighthood, in its closely related Old English uh, grammatical form, kinnitted, and again, I don't think anyone really knows how these words were pronounced, uh, referred to a time of being a young male or adolescent. This era, uh, beginning with the reign of Edward I, through the reign of Edward III, and the beginning of the Hundred Years' War, saw major changes in English military tactics. The early battles with the Scots saw mostly Scottish victories, such as the Battle of Cam Bush and Keth Bridge in uh, 1297, and the Battle of Bannockburn in uh, 1314. I, I know I've really got to improve my pronunciation of these things. During which the English archers attempted to fire their longbow arrows over the heads of, the, of their horsemen, only to witness the arrows landing in the backs of their own men. The defeats can be attributed to poor order of battle, otherwise described as battle array. The act of forming the soldiers into an array was to arrange the lines of men. To arrange soldiers was to make sure they fell into line and fought where they were supposed to. Despite this early misuse of the longbow, it was this new weapon, the longbow, that would become the defining weapon of the age, and its archers, the ones to ensure future English battlefield success. While it is not um, known for certain where the longbow came from or who invented it, it is widely attributed to the archers of southern Wales who were fighting, um, or they were guerrilla uh, fighters uh, fighting against uh, English incursions. An arrow shot from a longbow could produce enough velocity to penetrate a knight's chainmail. It wasn't the first weapon to achieve this, but it was the first such weapon that could be made cheaply, easily, and in great numbers. The Battle of Dublin Moor in 1332 reignited English-Scottish belligerence. Histori historians refer to this as the Second Scottish War of Independence. However, these titles were applied retroactively as the American War of Independence popularised the term War of Independence. Scotland was already independent, albeit subject to English uh, hegemony and regional dom dominance. The D Battle of Dublin Moor was uh, between two noble estates, the Anglo-Norman House of uh, Balliol and their English allies, hit upon the winning order of battle. So dismounted, heavily armed men were put in front and centre, and the longbow archers were thrust onto the flanks, forming a giant uh, crescent line. The longbow archers devastated the Scots, who advanced in columns. This battle array became the English standard order, order of battle for the next 100 years. Edward III declared himself the rightful heir to the French throne, leading to the beginning of the 100 Years' War. Uh, this war was declared in 1337, but fighting didn't begin till around 1340. The English took the tactics so su successfully used against the Scots to uh, win early battles on the continent, notably the Battle of Crecy in 1346, the Battle of Pontier ten years later, and culminating in the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. Following the Battle of Dublin Moor, Edward III pressed ahead with further incursions into, into Scotland. The front line of the battle array was the frontier, or frontier. The meaning of frontier shifted to refer to uh, demarcation lines around 1400. 
probably derived from frontier fortresses being close to borders. The frontier, in the sense of being the limit of civilized settlement in the gateway to a new un uncharted territory, is from around 1670, in reference to the exploration of North America. During the same time, a victory was referred to as a triumph. Trump is an early derivation of triumph. We refer to trump cards from a card game called Triumph, dating from the 16th century. English triumphs in the battle led to the uh, Treaty of Brittany, which ceded uh, various regions to Edward III and ended the first instalment of the 100 Years War. Now, despite the superior weapons and tactics, the English never succeeded in subduing the Scots. Uh, the two sides came to terms in 1357. The uh, Black Plague would prove much more devastating than the war, originating from China, um, so it's believed, and crossing over to Europe until the British Isles, it wiped out half the population. The plague killed a disproportionately higher number of the clergy, thus reducing the influence of written um, Latin in favour of written English. By the mid-14th century, the trend, the trend towards English was almost complete. King Edward, King Edward III, uh, popular among his subjects, understood English well, as did most aristocrats. A number of books were now published in English, including, albeit with a great level of controversy, the English translation of the Bible. Chaucer's Canterbury Tales appeared in 1380. Due to a labour shortage, serfdom was being uh, replaced by wages. The devastating effects of the Black Death made labour more valuable. Former slaves and serfs could now negotiate for their employment. The uh, military victories of Edward III had won back some of the land that now the now English descendants of the Norman conquerors regarded as theirs by right. They had won back most of the Normandy province. Moreover, English kings were no longer vassals to French kings. A new shared English identity was well underway. The word battleaxe was first, attended, first attested in the late 14th century, although the weapon itself dates back to ancient times. Battleaxe represents a good instance of the merging of Anglo-Saxon and Norman French dialects. Battle is of Norman origin and axe is of Old English origin, as opposed to the Norman French word for axe, hash, from which we derive the diminutive form hatchet from the French hachette. The battleaxes of the age were formidable and lethal weapons, especially in skilled hands. A knight's armour would not protect him from the wrath of the bearer of this savage weapon. The late 14th century also saw alarm attested into English, uh, from a French interjection to signal the arrival of enemy soldiers. Alarm was a contraction of an expression meaning two arms in both Old French and Italian, with the components a, la, and arm. The first component a is a preposition to denoting uh, direction and movement. La uh, is the definite article the, and arm, of course, means arms.